Okay, so today I'm over here at Rick Beato's studio. We are working on a video for Rick's channel and we have an opportunity to do something that I've been wanting to try out for a really, really long time. Right behind me, you can see a really clean vintage Marshall. That's a 1971 JMP 50 watt Marshall. It's completely original. Even though it looks like it's been retroplexed or restored, it hasn't. This thing is just super, super clean. So what we're gonna do in today's video is take this glorious amp and shoot it out against a Line 6 HX Stomp. Now the HX Stomp is a really popular unit. A lot of people are playing it nowadays and I've actually been kind of curious to see how the models that Line 6 built compare to the real amp. So in today's video, we're gonna do that. We're gonna try and get the Helix as close as possible to the Marshall. We've got the full studio set up at our disposal here. I've got my friend Ken Lanyon, AKA GL, here to help us out. And uh, we're gonna see if this is even possible. Okay, so here's the cabinet and mic setup we're gonna be using today. We've got the Marshall basket weave cabinet that's loaded with Celestion greenbacks. It's a 100 watt cab, so they're four 25 watt speakers. And we're gonna be using this mic combination here, a 57 and a Royer R122V. This is really cool tube powered ribbon mic. We actually just used this combo over on Rick's video and it sounds incredible. It's like the perfect mic combination for what we're about to do. And this one has a really cool mic clip setup that holds the 57 and the 122 perfectly in line with one another. So you don't have to do two different stands at once. It's fantastic. So we're gonna mic up the top left speaker in the cabinet here, get this dialed in, and we're gonna find a good sound on the Marshall to try and emulate with the Helix. Right now we have two microphones here. We have the Royer mic and the SM57, and we're gonna put them on one speaker of this cab. If you can see through here, you've got one speaker, one speaker, and there's two more. So we have a total of four. We're going to put it on one. The great thing about this clip is it allows you to hold the 57 and the Royer at the same time. And the capsules are even the way that you can, that they're right even. So there's no phase misalignment. And we're going to try to put the 57 so that it's on the edge of the cone and the woofer. The Royer is going to be on the outside. So the point of it is that the 57 is getting all the high end and the Royer is getting the darker, uh, uh, bassier tones. And you take those two together, mix them together, and you find your right blend and then it's a, a great sound. Okay, so you may be wondering why we decided to use EQ on the mic preamps going into Pro Tools. And we talked about it and decided that we wanted this to be as close to a real world recording scenario as possible. And in the real world, when you're recording an amp like a 71 JMP with greenbacks, you don't just take the mics straight into your DAW or to tape. Oftentimes you would EQ the amp to fit whatever scenario you were trying to work in. So you would EQ to the track, EQ to the guitar and the guitar player, and that's what GL is doing here. So to all of you that are furiously commenting that we should have gone straight in with no EQ, we decided to do this first to get a real world recorded Marshall tone to try and emulate with the HX stop. Sounds pretty good. Okay. So that's so let's go over this real quick. Here's the 57 with EQ. So go ahead. Without EQ. With EQ. Okay, now we'll go to the, uh, the Royer mic. Here's with EQ. Without. With again. 
It job. really, yeah, it really yeah. clears up the muddiness yeah. of that. <laughs> any EQ. Yeah, that's, uh, that does not suck. <laughs> okay, here we go. So let's uh, jump over to the stomp and see, okay. see if we're close. I think what I'm going to try and do is just pull up the 50 watt plexi model and just match what we have on the JMP. Actually the stomp has that cabinet with those speakers modeled as well. And we can do the same mic, although it's a 121 and not a 122 V, yeah. but they're close. So we can do the same mic combination, same cabinet and almost the same amp. It's a plexi versus this is a JMP, but yep. I've already pulled up the uh, amp and the cabinet here and then this is just a volume pedal I've got a spring reverb bypassed there is a low and high cut here so I'm cutting the bottom at uh, 40 Hertz and high cutting at 10k and then this is a compressor but it is bypassed so we'll just go to the amp here and just kind of look at my starting with the bass bass is at 8 yeah treble at about eight as well. And then I always bring the sag up on these gainier profiles because it emulates the amp more. And then now the two drives. So this is the important part because we got the channels jumped. The bright channel is about six. Okay, so I think that's a good starting place. And uh, we're also just going DI. So we're going stereo left and right DI out of the stomp and into these BAE 1066s here. Think we can do it? I think we can. No, I don't think so, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Rangy. Yeah, way more boxy, yeah. not even yeah. close. So let's pull out. First of all, I need to make it brighter. Better. Better. Yeah. Still, still, still sounds kind of small. Yeah, it's like boxy sounding a little bit. Yeah. It's in the low end. It's not getting as much bass. It doesn't. doesn't bass. That, yeah. How, how high is it cranking? I think this is gainier overall. What is gainier? This? this the the real amps gainier.
So I'm hearing a couple of things. Um, first of all, the mid range on the amp is different. Mid range is more scooped and the helix, the stomp is tighter in the response. It's, it's, it's almost more like a solid state rectified amp versus a tube rectifier that's yeah, in the Marshall. That's a good, that's a good uh, comparison. Um, so the mid range is different. And then also I think we're hearing an element of like speaker distortion cause we've got that Marshall dimed yeah. that isn't replicated in the stomp. That's right. So I think that's part of the sizzle that we're hearing that we got pretty close on the stomp, yeah. but the mid range is different. The response is different, but it's pretty good for a pedal compared to the amp. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. I can tell the difference between the two, but but it's uh, uh, but they it sounds pretty similar. I think that uh, I think you're right about that. There's a real clearness to that to the Helix too that I that I really like out of it. A tightness. Yeah, and it's it's probably you know less low end. Maybe that helps you know the cl the clarity I, I think come there's out. There's a little there's there there is this. Um, uh, not fuzziness to the real amp, but there's there is there's a dynamic element to it that is slightly missing, mm -hmm. and a little bit of chime that that real amp yes. has. That's to me with the thing where I can tell the difference. Do you think that's in the speaker? Or do you think that's in the actual amp? I think that's. I'm not sure actually. I think it's in the amplifier, and when you back off and you're picking, it's it's where it shows up more. Uh, I just hear that little bit of chime that rea it seems to react differently on each on each note, whereas the the helix seems a little bit more consistent, if that's the right word to use. There's actually something that's kind of like a big giveaway if it's like the helix, um, when he like bends up and he hits a fourth up, and when he bends back down, you can hear like this. It sounds like a digital like it's some digital like noise. Like zzz. you can really hear it when you're playing through the helix. I don't know if you notice it either. Yeah. But when you play through the amp, like you couldn't, I couldn't hear it. The thing I do to fix that is a high end roll off. I'll cut everything above 10 K 12 K on this sound. I got rid of the high cut in order to try and get some of that sizzle back that the Which amp actually had. made it sound more like the yes, amp. It, yeah, yeah, it did. It did, that. it did sound, but you're getting more of that digital fizz mm -hmm. coming through too. Usable tone. Absolutely. Yeah, Usable definitely. Tone. Really of course. Close. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty impressive that something that fits on your pedal board got Pretty close to the real thing, I think. How much does it weigh compared to the real thing? <laughs> <laughs> and how much is it compared to yeah, no compared doubt. to the real amp, <laughs> you know? So this is something that I always try and remember when thinking about real amps versus their digital counterparts. The reality is I don't know how much it matters if you can nail a tone of a specific amp at a specific point in time with a specific mic placement using a specific guitar player and a specific guitar. To me, what's more important is can you get the digital alternative to the real amp to sound and feel usable in a real context? Can I plug into a digital amp, whether it be a Helix, an Axe FX3, or a Kemper, and feel like I'm playing something that is musical and responds like one of my real deal tube amps. And what I think we were able to show in this comparison is while the stomp never really got exactly spot on to the JMP's tone, we ended up getting something that was really usable and pretty musical out of it. And when you consider what that thing actually is, basically just a pedal that goes on your board, I think that's pretty impressive. Now, with all that being said, Let's all agree that Marshall is one amazing amplifier. That is an heirloom piece that'll be handed down and taken care of for generations to come. And personally, I feel really lucky that I am in a position to be able to play it and make videos with it. I mean, that is the Marshall sound that I have in my head when I think of a Marshall Plexi, even though, yes, I know technically it's not a Plexi, but still. So which did you prefer, the Stomp or the Marshall? This is going to be tons of fun in the comment section, I can already tell. But let me know, do you think the Stomp got even remotely close to the JMP, and which sound did you prefer? If you'd like to support the channel, check out The Green Room, which is linked down below. And speaking of the Helix, I just released a brand new Helix preset pack for the big Helix Floor and Helix LT models, not the Stomp 
but the big models, if you're interested in checking those out, those will be linked down below as well. I've built new presets from the ground up as well as adding to old presets with snapshots for everything and different effects, how I actually use the Helix. If you want more information on that, that's all linked down below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe here to the YouTube channel. And if you're new, click the bell icon to be notified when I'm posting new videos and I'm going live. Hope you enjoyed today's video, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'm Rhett Scholl, and remember there is no plan B.